Okay, so stoichiometric amounts, as the term amount suggests, hopefully amount makes you think moles, and hopefully stoichiometric makes you think of the balanced equation coefficients, in other words, the mole ratio. And so stoichiometric amounts means that we have moles that are present in the, in the like, amounts equivalent to the mole ratio. So we have reactants, amounts, moles of reactants that are reacting and moles of products that are being produced and those moles are present in the same ratio as the mole ratio. So for example, if we had two moles of A reacting, then what would be the amount of B required to react? Well, it's going to follow the mole ratio here. So if we have two moles of A, we'll need three moles of B and that will produce one mole of C. Oops. So how did I know that that was going to be one mole? Well, I needed to look at the coefficient, which I just filled in for you there, so you could see that being a one. What if you had four moles of A? Remember, the ratio has to be, so, so four to this number has to be in the ratio of two to three. So four to six would be the same ratio as two to three. Amount of C produced, two moles. So again, four to two is in the same ratio as two to one. So I'm doing this in my head, but really those, the using factor label and working the mole ratio as you did in um, prior lessons are exactly what I'm doing here. <clears throat> so for example, if we had 5.6 moles, of A, and we needed to figure out what the moles, the stoichiometric amount of B is, then I would look for the moles of B here, starting with the 5.6 moles of A, and I would just use the mole ratio just the same way that I do every calculation involving amounts of different substances. I use the coefficients in the equation and factor label to make sure I get them in the right order. So on your calculator, 5.6 times 3 divided by 2 produces 8.4 moles of B. So 5.6 moles of A will react. You'll need all of 8.4 moles of B. And then if you needed to do the stoichiometric amount of the product here, so how many moles are produced here? Well, again, a mole ratio calculation. Find the moles of C. You could start with either the 5.6 moles of A a or the 8.4 moles of B, you're going to find that you get the same answer both times. So I'll start with the 8.4 moles of B just to mix it up and use the mole ratio between B and C, so 3 here and 1 here, in order to generate the moles of C. So we finish with 2.8 moles of C. And so you would be able to obtain that same value if you started with the 5.6 moles of A. There you would have been using the ratio of A to C, which is 2 to 1, and changing that ratio, right, starting with the 5.6 moles, will have you end up with the same answer, 2.8 moles of C. And so in the same way that, that 4 to 6 to 2 is in a ratio equivalent to the mole ratio two in the equation, 2 to 3 to 1, so is 5.6 to 8.4 to 2.8. Those are all in the same ratio, 2 to 3 to 1. I'll just remind you that these are all amounts that I'm working with, all moles, not grams. Not grams. So if you were starting with uh, 10 grams of A, you couldn't just work your 2 to 3 ratio and figure out this. You'd have to first change your grams to moles and then work the mole ratio to figure out the number of moles. So stoichiometric amounts are exactly that. They are amounts. They are moles, not masses. So follow the coefficients in the balanced equation to determine stoichiometric amounts.